The, the way in which we treat terrorists of the past tells us how we will treat terrorists of the future. The reason why people assumed that he uh, was doing this, at least was inspired by Islamic State, is because it's something that Islamic State has called upon people around the world. We, he's, in terms of practicing, that's still coming out. We don't know whether... Well, you've just said what you've, you think. You've just given us your view, which is it has nothing to do with Islam. And other people... That has gone out, as we all are, are aware, that has been misinformation and things such as... Let me just finish my point. That would seem to me... Hi guys, yeah, welcome back. Hope you guys are feeling good. Thank you so, so much for clicking. So all Muslims don't deserve hostaging. Doc class Mure destroys Islam. So let's check it out. Maybe he is just a criminal committing a horrible crime, Douglas Murray. And the fact that there was this assumption that he was somehow linked to Islamic State, Islamic State clearly made a great uh, amount of that by saying he was one of their soldiers. Aren't we playing into their hands? Well, the reason why people assumed that he uh, was doing this, at least was inspired by Islamic State, is because it's something that Islamic State has called upon people around the world to do using exactly this sort of methodology. Islamic State have said for some years that since various cells in the West have found it very hard to get hold of the technology to make bombs in recent years, they've been disrupted from doing so. Since it's very hard in the UK, for instance, to get hold of Kalashnikov rifles, ISIS has called on people in countries like this uh, who follow their message uh, to carry out attacks using vehicles, very low-grade attacks, knives, you know, th this sort of thing. So. So that's, that's why. It, it fits a pattern of ISIS-inspired attacks. So we'll, we'll find out exactly, uh, or some more, of what uh, motivated him in the days and weeks and months to come. As for the question of, uh, uh, of publicity, this, this is a huge question which we're always wondering about. This was a good week, after all, wasn't it, to wonder about terrorism and our attitude towards it in general. Um, Martin McGuinness, I think responsible for more deaths than anybody else in the UK in recent decades, uh, died and was eulogized in the House of Commons. 24 hours later, the House of Commons was attacked by another type of terrorism. But I think this is a very uh, bad sign for this country. The, the, the way in which we treat terrorists of the past tells us how we will treat terrorists of the future. I'm glad that was such a powerful point in the studio, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, listen, Douglas, you have your fans. <laughs> uh, uh, but this, 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 I think, should, should, should really worry us. During the IRA's uh, campaign, people said we would never give in to terror. Uh, all MPs, policemen and others all said the same thing again this week. But, but the record shows in this country that uh, we can give in to terror and have. And uh, so... You know, the, the whole issue of media coverage, as it were, by, by comparison with that fundamental societal problem, is, is relatively easy to solve. Mm, so we're playing their game, That's basically. That's rubbish. Because then you are adding to the feeling in communities uh, that they are being persecuted and they are being uh, stigmatized. And then that adds to their agenda. Mm. That uh, uh, the demonization of Britain. So it's a, sure. it's a feedback loop, isn't it? But I, don't, I don't think we've got into that. I don't think that's been what's happening. I think there it's are, been very, very. Has it been happening? I think yeah. it's been the, very. The, um, it has been huge statements. Uh, well, look, what, what are you talking about the EDL for? Uh, I mean, I'm talking about our society as a whole, okay? Mm. In our society as a whole and our media as a whole, there has not been any uh, crazy response to this. The media, by and large, has done its job, it's been fairly restrained. I agree there is a time definitely for all, for all of the discussions that have come up already. By the way, quickly on this thing about motive, and I, I, think, I think we shouldn't attribute motive until we know, um, but th th we should certainly look into the cases where drugs have been involved. I think it's long overdue to consider that. I also think we're long overdue to consider the role that religion can play in these attacks as well. These are not mutually exclusive. You know, there are many people who have carried out Islamist attacks who have been, you know, eating pork, drinking and so on, and then do what they do precisely as an act of, as it were, religious purification. That's very common. So these things are not, I mean, the 9-11 hijackers went to strip bars and all that kind of, you know, I mean, it, it, these things are not exclusive. They're a very, very complex uh, uh, picture that leads somebody to carry out this sort of thing. But, I do, you know, we, we, we should be having a wide-ranging discussion on it. Thankfully, on this program, we can, but quite often in our media and elsewhere, we do don't have as wide-ranging a discussion as we should, and our politicians in particular are clearly terrified of aspects of this discussion. Uh, what we, are they think okay, let's, we, we're open, we're honest, uh, we have a frank exchange of views. What are our politicians scared of saying? Well, I, first of all, they say that they're scared of saying actually 
you know, w w I mean, the amount of people proclaiming this week, you know, we will not allow this to change our society. I mean, who on earth thought it would? I mean, who thought that a guy with a knife and a car was going to bring down British democracy and cause the Queen to abdicate and put the flag of Islam over Buckingham yes, Palace? But, I mean, but, really. But, but, Douglas, you know. but, Douglas, one of the things which has happened ever since the, the terrorist attacks during the Blair era is that governments have used these attacks as a pretext to take away important liberties. And the, this, the, the Benjamin Franklin said long ago that if you, if you sacrifice your liberty for temporary security, you'll end up having neither liberty nor security, but our governments have flagrantly ignored this. Longer detention periods without, uh, without trial, more intrusion, more snooping. Is that a this danger, has, This has changed our society. What politicians are very much afraid of is, 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 the, is that people will discover how very little power they have to prevent these attacks, and far less than they pretend that they have, and that they, they actually cannot, uh, cannot do the things they claim, claim to do. And in, in a second, a pretext, Douglas, I don't think Douglas is quite finished. What do you think about the... What we heard from so many people, we will not be cowed. What did you think well, about that? It's, it's a very good thing that people think that and say yeah. that. But, I mean, the, I, I think some of the response to this, I mean, this was not the blitz. This was not a sustained night-after-night night campaign. It was one attack, a brutal, horrible attack in the heart of London. But, uh, we, and to that extent, sort of emotionally, I, and I agree with what Peter wrote this morning, we have to be careful not to be A policeman was killed, and when a policeman Absolutely. is killed, Keith Palmer, it almost strikes at the heart, of doesn't it? And, and, and our society and we pay tribute says, to him and has morning. said very clearly... But, Nicky, in, a lot of us here lived through the IRA bombing campaigns in London. We remember you know, piles of dead horses and, indeed, dead human beings in Hyde Park and Regent's Park on the same day. Actually, we didn't go into lockdown or half-mast or minute silence mode then, we thought, all right, these people are our enemies, we will put up with also, it. Our government, our government also, were the ones who let us down also, by actually giving in to IRA bombers and, and, and giving them pretty much all that they wanted and Anyways. going to Martin McInnes' funeral. They're, they're, they're actually contradicting what they're saying. Who because, is? Um, Douglas, because on the one hand, you're saying, look, we don't want to cower to the terrorists, we don't want to be singing their agenda, and yet the first thing everybody uses is the word Islam. Well, listen... In this particular state, I was actually in Scotland Yard on this case, so I was there on the day. To qualify as an Islamist incident, it has to fit a certain criteria. And it was discussed earlier on, but no one actually mentioned why this was classed and why it was taken over by SO15 as an Islamic incident. Otherwise, it would have just been homicide that would have taken over this case. There are certain criteria. For instance, if he said the word Allah, well, that would have been clearly uh, 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 an Islamic in, uh, Islamist incident. If he had had a flag of ISIS, clearly it would have been. So he didn't have any of those. He didn't say anything. He didn't leave a note. The only thing that makes this a counter-terrorism... Uh, he was matter, a Muslim. No, not even that. It was because he wasn't a... We don't know if he was a practicing Muslim because he clearly wasn't a very good Muslim. Was the what does that mean? What that does a very he, good Muslim mean? Well, if he's into... He was taking cocaine. He was into... Um, you know, wife bashing, all those things. If he was a Muslim, he wouldn't be taking cocaine and having, you know, drinking alcohol. But or, it was because he attacked... Beating. Let me just finish the point. The reason was because he attacked a political institution, the heart of government. That was one of the reasons, if you like, um, that qualified it. We, he's, in terms of practising, that's still coming out. We don't know whether... Well, you've just said what you, you think. You've just given us your view, which is that it's nothing to do with Islam. And other people will have a view that it is. But I'm suggesting that as a society, we actually take the time to work out people's motives. But it's very clear that in your case, for instance, you wouldn't want it to be ascribed to an Islamic motive. Even if it was turned out that he had a copy of the Quran in the car, you we would, would say it had that. nothing to no, do no, with no, Islam. No, we would have and there are that. people, there are people, let me finish the point, and there are people who would say it has something to do with Islam, even if it's very clear that it has nothing to do with Islam. No, yeah. But there are, in this whole thing, my simple point is that we should be looking at the motives, and at the moment there are parts of the, the anti-terrorism and counter-extremism strategy where the government is, and politicians are very worried about treading on it. And you saw it, as was mentioned earlier, in, T in Theresa May's comments in the House this week, where she immediately ruled one aspect of this whole thing out. Abdullah Rasul, I'm killing them. Douglas, Douglas wanted to come in. Douglas, come on. This is a great example of it right here. This is a great example of it right here. This Ayan Lucy thinks that none of the terrorists ever quote the Quran. Flat out wrong. Flat no, out wrong. Let me give you that. one example. You mentioned it earlier, the killers of Lee Rigby. Uh, Michael Adelajo, on his body, uh, w uh, when the police arrested him, 
Uh, he had a note in his pocket to his young daughter explaining why he did what he did. It's all on the public record. You can see the facsimile on the BBC's website. And he has footnotes throughout it of Quranic verses that he explains justify, in his view, his actions. Now, I, well, that's the beginning. Well, 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 let me finish my point before the proselytization begins, the okay? Let me just finish my point. That would seem to me to be, therefore, a very clear occasion, never mind the thousands of others we could list worldwide, a very clear occasion on this country when one of our soldiers was murdered on our streets where clearly scripture had something to do with it. So the problem that a lot of us have is we are willing to discuss the drugs bit, we're willing to discuss the foreign policy bit, we're willing to discuss all this. Why are you not willing to concede that there is a religious element? Sometimes... No, 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 no wait, wait, wait. wait. We understand the main point. It's a commercial it's consideration. It's a commercial consideration. Very quickly, we have to point to the Obviously, 24-hour news pushes a lot of this. Obviously, there's a lot of speculation because we have the 24-hour news culture. However, there are things about that that are unhealthy, but it's nothing like as unhealthy as the fact that if you look back, as I said at the start, about our attitude to terror of the past and our attitude to terror present, when the IRA killed MPs and many policemen and many soldiers, what did we end up doing? We ended up putting the people who had orchestrated that campaign at the heart of government, and that is far sicker. The idea that 20 years from now, anyone who was associated with Khalid Massoud would be put, but, yeah, would be put into power, that's far more of a societal sickness than 24-hour news media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sabah, Sabah, I'm going to give you the last word. Sabah, we've got another debate coming up with very interesting people to talk about it, and it's a fascinating topic. But generally speaking, the coverage of this this week, mm -hmm. has, it, has it been... Um, has it been self-defeating and that it has given unnecessary oxygen to those people who would destroy us or has it ultimately been responsible and the right way to cover it? Um, it's a double-edged sword. I think overall it's been quite responsible. However, there have been some um, uh, tabloids and some, uh, some um, news um, that has gone out, as we all are are aware that has been misinformation and things such as you know Birmingham is the jihadist capital of England you know that, that that's not helpful unless it's backed up by evidence it is, and no. um, it, it well, is. it's actually it's not the capital it's the second capital well, of terror London is the capital well, London is the capital of terror yeah, in the UK yeah. Birmingham is second debatable yeah. no, but, no 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 uh, if you look at the stats I released earlier but, this month it proves that but well, but you know, do you know what I'm gonna have very hard case of a, a priest and a confessional knowing about a paedophile if I can say, if to widen that out a bit, consider the number of people in our society who don't, who haven't sworn that they would keep secrets, but have done for personal reasons, community reasons, or social reasons. Look at the number of people who must have known, for instance, about Jimmy Savile's abuse. And they kept silent, not because they were sworn to by something, but because they felt the pressure of it. Mm -hmm. So it's quite easy to sort of think of this as being a sort of uh, uh, the hardest problem for a Catholic priest. Actually, it's a society. A lot of people in our society cover over things whilst moralising about things like Catholic priests. And as a practising Catholic, one does wonder what... Um... So he's just trying to talk about the terror or the terrorism happening around, you know, the nations. He's just trying to let us understand why he believes that everything happening in the country or happening around the world, the terror happening is all... The foundation is from the religion, Islam, and just trying to make his point, uh, give an example of things that happen, how they can eradicate this problem and the solution to it, so that peace can reign. That, that was a beautiful one. Let me know your point of view, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>